Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to have a look at an Alpha Server 1000. This particular one was sitting in the basement at work for many years and they were throwing things out and I saved it from the skip. Um, this one's been sitting in my garage for the last few years as well. The issue with it is, is that the power supply was dead and nobody could be bothered fixing it. So. I'm going to have a go at it. This one came in either rack mount or tower. This is the rack mount version just because they've turned the console around. Uh, all the media bays are still in the tower orientation though. Uh, this one's got a CD ROM drive, a DAT drive and a floppy. Looks like the CD ROMs Put it upside down, but that's okay when it's in the rack mount position. This is the view around the back. Uh, the internal SCSI, VGA, keyboard and mouse, a couple of serial ports, parallel port, and it's got some cards in it, uh, 3DE45s, 435s, and an external SCSI card. And the power input, of course. Having a look inside now, we've got a baseboard which has got three PCI slots and the rest are EASA slots. Um, this is the onboard SCSI and a couple of uh, battery based devices here. One's the real time clock and the other's for the CMOS. And looking on the other side, we've got uh, lots of memory slots here. And this is the processor card. So under the big heatsink, you've got your alpha processor and various other um, support chips there. In a special slot, of course. And this compartment in the bottom front is where the power supply lives. There's all the various connectors there. The, just an ISC cord comes from the, the socket on the back and plugs into the power supply. And I've obviously removed the power supply to try and repair it. And here is the power supply. Fairly complicated thing. A 400 watt power supply. On the other side you've got all the various uh, connectors that go to the, the, the motherboard and the, um, the one for the peripherals and things like that. Uh, non-standard power supply, it's not a PC power supply, so it's going to be very hard to source replacements. Here's all the details for those that are interested. There's two halves to the power supply. Uh, most of this side is the high voltage side and most of this is the low voltage side. And there's crossover between the things with the cables too, like the high voltage. The main supply comes in here and then flips over to the other side by this cable and then there's it goes the other way too, there's connectors from this side that, that flip over to the other side. When I opened this up originally I found this inside. High voltage capacitor, uh, 400 volt rated and it's obviously shorted and blown the thing up and blew the fuse. So I had trouble finding a replacement for this locally, but I managed to find one in the UK and it has now arrived. So I'm not sure whether other things have been affected, other components have been affected, but I'll soon find out. This is where the capacitor came out. And I don't know whether you can see, but it's blown a fair sort of a hole in the, in the PCB when it's exploded. Uh, fortunately it hasn't damaged any of the tracks, these tracks are still in good condition. Um, I've done a fair bit of cleaning here to get rid of all the electrolyte that spilled out. Uh, whether I've done enough cleaning I'll, I'll find out in due course. So now I've got the replacement capacitor for this, I'll fit it and replace the fuse and we'll see what else is broken. 
This is the replacement capacitor, big monster, 450 volts, 470 microfarads. Okay, I've pulled all the cards out of the machine and put the power supply back in. Plugged it in and it didn't blow up, so that's a good sign to start with. Now, these machines have got a micro switch in the top of them so that they won't power on when the lid's off. So I'll just put the lid back on and see what happens. Okay, push the power button. And the fans are spun up and then it spins down. So it's getting some power through. Put the CPU card in now, so you just check some of the voltages. And we're getting 12 volts there. Check the other rail. So we're getting 5 volts on that one. Looking good. Okay, I've now put the memory in. So you've got to put it in a certain way and put ECC banks in and things like that so it's not just straight in a line. Anyway, I'll just repair it on now and hopefully we should get something on the display. And we're starting to get some diagnostics. Next thing to do is plug a serial terminal into it and see what we get. Start it up again. Okay, let's check the cards. You can see the SCSI card and the three nicks. Okay, so it looks like we're getting somewhere. This machine doesn't have any discs or any of that sort of stuff in it, so I'll have to do some reading on um, the firmware and the console commands and stuff like that and get a disc plugged in, but that'll be for part two. Anyway, hopefully you found that interesting and we'll catch up with you next time.